So, I don't normally make videos like this, but consider this in addition to the content that we already have on the channel. I'm gonna be reviewing a show that I just watched on Netflix that popped up when I was pretty much in the depths of my boredom. I had finished a lot of my shows and stuff like that. Still haven't watched Ozark, but I will be getting to that and I will be reviewing it on this channel when I get around to it. But I actually wound up checking out this show called Love is Blind. Yes, 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 I actually watched it. Now, for those that don't know what this show is and if you're curious about um, watching something like this, because I'm pretty sure we're all bored and you probably need a new, new Netflix suggestion, it's pretty interesting. The show is basically about eight men, eight women that do not know each other from Adam and they're not allowed to see each other until they're ready to make the commitment to get married. Yes, you heard that right. Now, how does this work exactly? Well, it's simple or kind of, you basically have these rooms called pods, right? Um, you have basically f four rooms, or I think it's like four to six rooms. Let's just say it's eight rooms on one side, eight rooms on the other side, and um, it's, it's eight rooms for the guys, eight rooms for the girls, and they're all separated by a wall. So you don't even get to see the person you're talking to. Now, for the first episode, the first half of the first episode, these guys and girls are basically going from room to room to room talking to every single person that's in this big pool and they're seeing who they vibe with the hardest this is solely based off of um verbal interaction the information they choose to share with each other whatnot what have you now there's a few interesting characters in this whole show that i wanted to talk about because this ties into something that i really want to get into now you have this one dude his name is barnett right and he's really suave with the ladies like he connects with every single lady he talks to in these rooms called pods right he's 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 talking to each one like i said does not know what any of them look like from adam right like each, each woman looks completely different different race different mood different whatever and it's just it's a pretty interesting thing Thing. but he's very confused doesn't know what he wants but it, it ultimately boils down to these two women this really young you know very lustful girl and this older valley girl lady she's in her 30s and she keeps she makes that very clear that she's old as fuck okay so basically um what happens is barnett develops this relationship with the older woman and everybody else you know what i'm saying but the but the older woman's really like into him but there's this other guy she's also kind of in cahoots with too she's like this other guy's voice sounds really good he's he's talking to me about like things that they can relate to the other guy's from chicago she's from chicago it all works out right so um barnett they ultimately winds up rejecting her and she was kind of like you know looking forward to them being a thing but that didn't happen. So she rebounds onto this other guy that I was talking to you about. His name is Mark. Now I know this sounds crazy. You guys are like, bro, why are you, why are you even talking about this? It don't make no sense. Listen, it gets crazy. So Barnett goes to the young, sprightly, lustful chick, does his thing. Now, the older woman is, a, I've seen this happen so much and it's cringy. I wanted to talk about this particular part of the show. Um, she, the, you know, she, she talks to Marcus, which is the dude that she rebounded to out of almost like it was a rebound it was it was a clear rebound she didn't even seem really interested to talking to him she just wanted to she, she didn't want to feel lonely so she's like you know what at least this guy has me i'm gonna talk to him to make the other guy jealous that's the vibe i got you know so the, the cool thing about this show is once you've made a commitment to um you know when she's like okay cool i'm ready to marry you and stuff like that the guy has to, to, to then propose to said girl that you know uh, he feels like he's compatible with if the girl says yes Then they get to finally see each other in person to see if you know They like how, how, how the other person looks and then from there they go into their honeymoon island blah 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 So on so, so forth anyway so forth and so on So basically what winds up happening is Marcus proposes to 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 the little girl I think her name was Jessica or something. Yeah, it was Jessica. They <laughs> they call her Messica And I'm gonna tell you why in a second anyways you know, she he sees her, he's head over heels for her. You could instantly see that she was definitely turned off. He was shorter than she expected. She, I, I feel like she dates like six foot five white dudes in frat houses. That's the kind of vibe she was giving off. She's tall, blonde, and talks like this. Oh my God. Like it was just so painfully cringe to watch. 
But I have to talk about this because it was something that was irking my soul. I've seen it a lot, and it's just, oh, it's so painful. Um, so anyways, they go to this the second chapter of this TV show where uh, they put all the couples that you know were proposed to on this island um, in Mexico. Well, not an island, but this resort in Mexico where they, they have fun. They spend time together to see if they're physically compatible. And this woman was using him up like the sponge he was. And it was so sad because this man was really trying, really trying, like trying to get her attention, trying to connect. And she was just turning him down. Every little thing he would say to her, she would try to twist it and blow it back in his face as if he was trying to hurt her. Like if he's like, oh, I really like your hair. She's like, oh, does that mean you don't like my eyes or my lips or my body? Oh, like it was just so annoying, so painfully annoying and what was also annoying about this woman is that she kept emphasizing that there was a large age gap that's what i forgot to mention between her and the gentleman that she matched with so marcus is 24 she's 34 and she won't shut the fuck up about it she's like well i don't know if it's gonna work because you're like 10 years younger than me when the reality was she's shallow as fuck Fuck. She is shallow as fuck. She's like, I don't, I just need somebody that's ready, and I just think you're not ready. Like, and the dude showed way more maturity. Like, he was astronomically more mature than she was. Astronomically. Um, case in point, at some point in the show, all the, the, one, the one kicker is, like I said, all these couples are on the same island together, right? So they all get a chance to see the other people they were talking to you know behind the wall they get to put the, the name to the face and so jessica gets to see the guy that she was trying to talk to the barnett dude i was talking to you guys about and just really weird man because she was still she's like oh my god he's exactly what i pictured ah but she's with this marcus guy right she she used marcus as a rebound but she was trying to she was trying to sabotage barnett's little relationship but the dude held it down man he's like nah man i'm with my girl you need to leave me the hell alone because jessica was kind of trying to slide over there and talk to him they the, the 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 whoever filmed this show was slick too they were feeding everybody shots uh, all kinds of different alcoholic drinks so they can they can stir up some drama and jessica was a messica i'm telling you like it was the craziest one of the craziest things i've seen but something that i've seen before you know um, I actually used to be the the simpleton, aka simp, that was Marcus, you know, um, and I think it's just a misdirection of your energy, and that's what ultimately sucked about watching it. She was clearly into a dude that she wasn't with, right, and she was trying to make the relationship, quote unquote, that she was in. Um, she wasn't even trying to make it work. She was just dragging him along. It's like she wanted to milk all of the free stuff up from the show and then leave at the last minute so it was so cringy there were points in the show where even like um there's this one point so she finally gets to see barnett for the first time um you know putting the face of the name and she's like oh my god you're such a hottie like you are exactly what i picture she's like aren't you with that mark dude and it's like yeah but you know i'm just like not physically attracted to him Ugh. so it was kind of weird you know and i'm like bro what the fuck that's some disrespectful ass shit anyways she goes back to the hotel with this Marcus guy, right? And then um, they're they getting like they're they're just joking around back and forth. She's like, and then she's she's quote unquote so fucking drunk, right? She's not drunk. She's just speaking her mind, and she's like, I really think that Barnett guy is hot. And knowing that Marcus knows that this Barnett dude and her had a thing because the guys talk behind the scenes, the girls talk behind the scenes, so they kind of know what's going on. And, and Barnett's like, I kind of like Jessica, but I'm not really sure. And Mark is like, is like, I fucking love her, bro. I fucking love her, bro. So crazy story. All to bring it back to the main point of what I'm trying to talk about, which is the simp that is Marcus. And I hate to say it, but there is a point in the show where they actually bring outside influences into the into play. Because first, it's purely emotional. You don't even get to see the person. Then they put you on an on you know at a, in a resort to see if you're physically compatible, which Marcus and Jessica apparently weren't because they didn't even they did not cheeks was not clapped at all during the show. She said that her cheeks got clapped, did not get clapped at all. Marcus did not clap anything in the near remote part of cheeks everybody else was getting it in minus one other couple but he definitely was not getting anything okay that was a wasted trip completely now i know sex isn't everything but that's a big part if you plan on spending the rest of your life with somebody anyways so there's an outside element introduced into uh the whole 
uh, relationship and stuff like that. And it kind of just gets a little crazy, right? So Marcus, you know, introduces her to his mom, which I thought was kind of fucked because obviously, um, you know, she she keeps bringing up the same point. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, like, I don't know if I can be with him because of age. The, Marcus's mom's like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> like, it's, it's about your spirit. You, you gotta have the, the right energy, you know? And she just kept gunning and gunning for this one little point, this one little point. Anyways, um, it sucks because it just seemed like the entire show, Marcus is putting in 150% effort to keep her, and she's trying every possible way to, uh, to sabotage uh, the, his love for her, you know? She's trying to like, oh my God, like try to create something where he does something so she can have an excuse to leave. My whole thing is just tell him you're not interested and leave. Like say, yo, I'm, I'm not feeling this. I'm not into you, like bye, you know? He kind of could pick up on that. But like I said, the part where they introduced the outside influences was pretty key because part of one of those outside influences was uh, Marcus's best friend. Now on sight, on sight, when he saw what was going on, he's like, yeah, boy, he, He's not, she's not into you. She is not into you. She, she, she tries telling him this. And he's like, bro, you don't know what you want, man. Like, you, mean, you don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like, blah, blah, blah. This at the third. Best friend tries to warn him. And you need homeboys like this. Like, he was being real. Like, the cameraman, the host of the show is asking the best friend, do you think this is going to work? Best friend said, hell no. This dude's about to get played like a motherfucking fiddle, which Marcus was the entire time. And guess what happened when they got up to the damn, um, the, the little, like, wedding ceremony? She said no. She said hell no. I was waiting for that too. My whole point is this happens to a lot of people. And it's and it's so frustrating to watch, you know, because I feel like this still happens. And like I said, I've been in those shoes before. There was a, a, a girl I had a crush on, I guess, in, in my way, way, way younger years, like early high school years, right? And, you know, I wound up dating her but it was almost pity dating it's like i asked so many times that she's like fine i don't want to look like an asshole in front of all these people and then of course the consequence of that is she treated me like shit <laughs> of course right and any little thing i would do any little mistake i would make she would try to flip that and turn it on to me so it was a perfect opportunity to break up and i didn't see that so i would like buy her stuff i would try to do things for her I've been drawing since I was little, so I would draw her pictures. And I thought that would work, and it never did. So I was just being, and it sucked because I think when she, when she, cause she ultimately wound up breaking up with me, of course, right? And then my little heart was shattered. I'm like, oh no, she was the one. Hindsight's 2020. She was using the shit out of me. She was using the shit out of me. And what it sucks is because is is people go through that and don't realize the signs. If your friends, your family, and everybody around you is telling you the same thing. You should take it kind of into consideration. Now, I understand everybody's different. You shouldn't rely on other people's opinions. So it kind of contradicts what I just said. But if everybody is saying you're dating a duck, you might be dating a duck. And maybe you're into ducks. Maybe you like being cucked out. That's fine. But it would behoove you to kind of do some, some, some deep diving and see if you're with the right person. There are a lot of red flags that people tend to ignore because they tend to uh, be so over overwhelmed with physical or sexual attraction, they kind of overlook the 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 merit of a person. Now Barnett wound up with this 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 oh my god overly lustful sexual lady or whatever, right? And my big thing, whoo, she had a lot of financial issues. She was one of those women that didn't have a job. She never graduated college, or you know, she never grad she never graduated college, and she had a lot of student debt, a lot of credit card debt. She lived with her parents. It was just a hot mess. And she wants to be a stay at home wife, right? And she wants to spend up everything. That that, that that's that's her whole mo. That's already an issue right there. So it's just noticing these red flags before you dive nose deep into something like this. Now there was one successful couple that came out of the show, and that's great. Uh, another point I wanted to touch on too is I'm well aware everybody's relationship is different. And and I know the, the big point, the big shock value of the whole entire show is how fast would you be willing to get married to the person of like possibly your entire life, right? Now, everybody gets married at different points. Some people get married after meeting each other for two days and they, they go strong for 30 years. 
Other people date for five, six, seven years and get divorced after getting married for an, an additional 10 years. So there is no set time frame that you should know somebody, but there are signs you should pay attention to. If a person doesn't have their shit together <laughs> and you guys love each other, look deeper into that because people say marriage is hard and it, it definitely is. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, and I feel like people take that for granted. They, 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 they have sex with somebody that they, you know, oh my God, this is the best poon I ever had in my life. You know what I'm saying? And then like, they just, they're locked down with problems they never saw. But that's another thing too. You're, it, it happens in all relationships and I see it. I've been in it. You know, um, you typically don't leave the relationship with the person you came in with because everybody changes. You can meet somebody that has no red flags at all and they don't, and like red flags will pop up. You know, and it's honestly like it, it, in that regard, it boils down to what you're willing to deal with, what you will and won't tolerate. And a lot of that changes because as we get older, our personalities change and, um, you know, we change as people with the person that we're with. So this show kind of opened up a lot of questions. But the ultimate focal point of the show that I looked at that I'm like, damn, this sucks was Marcus and Messica. Man, Messica at one point got so drunk in the show, man. She was she was talking to to I think Barnett's girl about him. She's like, "Oh my god, I totally had a crush on your man, but you guys are so cool." And um Barnett's wa like wife cuz they got married, um she said, "Look, bitch, I'm gonna knock your teeth out if <laughs> you talk about my man one more time. I'm gonna give you a warning shot like, cool." Just a crazy show, crazy show. Overall, very interesting watch. I was captivated the entire time. Now, yes, it is painfully cringy at times. I mean, it's one of those shows. It's like The Bachelor, but 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 like twenty times cringier in some ways. But very interesting to watch. Like I couldn't look away. I'm like, let me go find another show to watch, and I just couldn't seem to look away from it. So, would definitely recommend checking that shit out. Uh, out of a ten, I would give it definitely a a, a six and a half. Um, you know, mainly for some of the shock elements involved in what I witnessed and stuff like that. And just the overall mess that was what we witnessed. Now it did, like I get to conclude this whole thing because I know I've been talking for a minute. The whole question, the entire show is, is love blind? I agree. I, I, I to, to some degree, I, I do believe love is blind, but I do also think that you should have a rough template of like a checklist of things, of qualities that the person you, you want to spend the rest of your life with has as a foundation. It doesn't have to be a laundry list, but fundamentals. Do you want loyalty? Do you want a sense of independence? Do you want financial responsibility, general responsibility with that financial responsibility, and a few other baseline qualities that no matter what other things pop up, you can be like, cool, I can deal with this person. They have everything else together. We can work through everything else like just a template of a strong foundation let me know what you guys think of that that was a long ass review um i just thought <laughs> very very interesting oh god just don't don't be marcus man marcus was a cuck i'm so sorry like but he he totally was and he didn't even realize it like that's the, the sad thing i think points in the show he kind of knew that she wasn't into him and he decided to go with it anyways he was trying to convince her that he was her her soulmate and she was just like, ah, you know, like it was very cringe, painful to watch um, for that part of the show for sure. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys uh, so much. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.